Okay, so today we're going to learn about the simplest way of transmitting, which is kind of the modern equivalent of Morse code. And the way we're going to do that is we have these little four button key fobs that I bought that claim to be 315 megahertz four button radio frequency remote controls. And let's look at what we see when we uh, transmit from the remote control by pressing a button and receiving it on the RTL SDR. So let me pull up. Uh, let me start screen sharing. As is often the case, the first thing I will do is give this a name here. Let me just call this remote, remote, remote. And I'll change the sample rate to an even one megahertz, one E6, and save this as remote.grc. Oh, I guess I already had that. All right, and the first thing I will do is I will uh, pull down my RTL SDR source. If I double click on it, the, it outputs complex numbers and the sample rate is sample rate. So I'm gonna change the center frequency here to be 315 megahertz. And as is often the case with these, I am going to display this in two different ways. So um, I will look up my QT GUI options here, and I will display it in time, and I will display it in frequency. All right, so I think the defaults are probably pretty good to start out with. So I'm just going to hit play. Let me move this over so we can see both the flow graph and the output at the same time. Hit play. And what comes up, oops, what comes up is mostly just extremely weak noise with nothing particularly interesting happening in the frequency spectrum. But now let me hit one of the buttons. And I'm, you know, pretty close to the antennas, maybe a meter away. So right away, we see a couple of things happening. There's some data flashing by on the top and uh, there's a little spike in the frequency spectrum around some particular frequency that's not exactly zero. So these things aren't exactly centered at 315.000 megahertz. In fact, if I put my mouse over where this thing is blinking, it looks like it's maybe 40 kilohertz above 315 megahertz. So let's figure out what what's going on here. And I'll do that first by middle clicking with my, my mouse button and stopping this. I, that wasn't a very good place to stop it. Let me try again. Start, stop, start, stop. There we go. So this is sort of what's flashing by. I see is a lot of nothing for a while. And then uh, the data or the, the uh, carrier wave turns on and there's some tone that's that's going. And again, this, this has been shifted down by 315 megahertz. And we saw that this tone is about 40 kilohertz. There's a tone here. And, and that repeats every so often in a certain pattern. So let me change how much of this pattern I'm looking at. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go into this time sink here, get properties. And instead of looking at the default 1024 points, I'm going to look at, let's say, 10,000 points, uh, 10 E3. And let me, oh, is that too many? Maybe that's too many. Oh no, it's invalid for an integer. This has to be an integer. Okay, 10,000. All right, play that again. And now I'll hit my button. And now we're seeing some blinking and depending on how close or far away from the antenna I'm moving my button, I see some different patterns here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna examine what this looks like. So if I zoom in, by drawing little boxes, you can see that the, the tone starts and then it stops and it starts and stops again. All right, let me zoom in even more here. And we can see that when the tone comes on, because this is a complex signal, we get both a real part and an imaginary part. So let me draw what's going on here. I'll stop sharing for a second. In the real world, what's actually happening over RF is that there's uh, 
315.040, you know, a, a radio uh, frequency signal very close to 315 megahertz. And it occasionally turns on and goes super fast. This is a real signal, turns off, turns on, goes super fast, turns off, turns on, goes super fast, turns off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we can measure how long these each take, but we'll see that there are uh, many, 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 many cycles of this that go by. Uh, what we actually get is we, we do not directly sample this extremely fast 315 megahertz wave. The RTL-SDR does its frequency mixing that I talked about last time. And instead, what we get is we get a complex number. Let me actually plot what's happening on the complex plane. So here, before anything transmits, the amplitude of this real signal is 0. And so the amplitude of the complex signal is 0. While the signal is transmitting, if I were to draw the complex plane again, let me just draw it over here where, where we have another very fast transmit signal. The amplitude is non-zero, and the frequency is whatever the difference between the actual radio frequency is and the frequency that we have it tuned to. So we saw that uh, by looking at those complex plots, we're off by uh, 40 kilohertz or something. And so what we have what we see is we see a complex sinusoid that's spinning around at 40 kilohertz with some amplitude. So each of the signals is, uh, each of the samples is going around in a circle pretty quickly with some amplitude. And then in the spaces in between, the complex number goes back to zero. So let me actually show uh, one, more, one more plot here. Let me share the screen. And I'll show the constellation sync, which is just the, the real and imaginary parts on the x and y axis, the complex number. So if I were to play that, right now we have an amplitude that's pretty much zero, and all the points are clustered around zero. And let me make this a little bit more square. When I push the button, we get amplitude that's not zero. Uh, we get the amplitude switching between zero and not zero. And as I move the remote closer and farther away from the antenna, it's all kinds of interference and stuff happening in this room, but uh, the amplitude of the signal changes a little bit. And so the question is, how do, we, how do we decode this signal? And one of the simplest things to do is to just look at the magnitude of this complex number. And that's a lot easier, actually, than if we had the original radio frequency signal going very fast. Because here we would have to actually track over many, many samples, look at several cycles of this, and ask, do we have some, some high amplitude at that particular frequency, or, we, or do we not? And here, all we have to do is we have to just take the magnitude of this complex number. And so there's a convenient block for that. If I look for mag, complex to mag. This will take the magnitude of that complex number and return a real number. So I'll add that to my, my, my block. And in order to show what's going on, it's pretty convenient to uh, only look at every, every few samples. So I'm going to keep only one in every several samples. So there's a block called keep one in n. And I can choose how many samples I keep. So I'm going to keep one in every, let's say, 100 samples. And since I have a real number, uh, with the magnitude is a real number, I'll change this to a float input. And now I want to show this. Now, if I'm keeping only one in every 100 samples, when I show this with a QT GUI time sync, I have to remember two things. First, I have to change this to a float, since I'm showing a real number. And second, I have to remember that this isn't coming in at sample rate anymore. It's coming at sample rate over 100. And uh, that conveniently calculates uh, 10 kilohertz. So let me, show, let me show that. And I believe, so this first one must be the, the keeping one in every 100. 
because it's a real, real plot. There's not an imaginary component. And now let me hit my button again. And we can see some actual magnitudes coming in. And let me pause a couple of these plots here. So let me stop this one, stop that one, uh, stop that one. Uh, all right, so, so what we see here is each of these little bursts turns into a few samples up here. And I can see exactly how many samples that is by zooming in on this pattern. Let me zoom in maybe like that. Uh, if I middle click, I can show each sample. So in signal one, I can say, let me set a marker to be a circle. And here I've got, uh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five samples that are high, uh, a couple samples that are low, some high samples, some low samples, some high samples. I can, I can show each of these samples. Um, let me view this a little bit more here. So let me stop this. I'll permanently turn those samples on by going into config and turning on the marker circle. Let me show more points also. So I'm only showing 1,024 points. Let me show 10,000 points, 10,000 points. All right, so I'll play that. Let me make that big. And let me hit the button. Let me make sure I'm not too close here. There we go. And what we see is we see the same little burst repeating over and over and over again. So each of these, let me stop here. Each of these patterns is a little burst of digital looking data that's repeated over and over and over again. And you can see how often it's repeated by looking at the time difference between these. Let me zoom in on the first couple here. So this one goes you know, 50 milliseconds or something, and then it repeats again and uh, goes another 50 some milliseconds. All right, so um, here we can actually see the digital data that's being sent. Now, let me, let me show you a couple tricks about how to look at this data. I could certainly zoom in and look at the samples themselves. That's not the most interesting thing to do at the moment. Uh, 10,000 seemed a little bit too high. Let me go down to maybe 2,000. Yeah, that's pretty good. One thing I can do is I can trigger on a particular um, particular transition here, just like an oscilloscope. So if I look in the options here, I can look at the trigger tab. And right now the trigger mode is free. So it's just gonna draw it no matter what. If I trigger, uh, I do auto trigger, say, a positive going level, so let's put the level at maybe 0.3, sort of in the middle of the transition. And I play again. If we're lucky, it will trigger pretty consistently. Uh, so you see the trigger level, but it didn't actually trigger consistently here. Let me, let me go down to fewer samples here. All right, what I found is that if I set the number of points to 1160, that gives me a pretty good signal with trigger level set to 0.3. Let me play that. So hitting button A, sort of doesn't move around. I can pause it if I want. Let me compare the four buttons. So let me take this block and copy it several times. So this will be the top block. For, that's for another button, another button, and for the fourth button. And let me connect all those. I'm gonna call this one button D, going backwards, because it's the way it shows up in the flow graph, button D, button C, button B, and button A. And I'll pause the graph at all the relevant points. So here, I've got a nice capture of button A. Let me pause that. 
stop. Let me hold down button B and pause that. Hold down button C, pause that, hold down button D, and pause that. And now what I can see is the difference in the data between the buttons. So you can see that they all start the same. They're short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Same thing for all these, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. And button A ends with a bunch of short pulses and two long pulses toward the end, followed by this last short pulse. Button B, short pulses, two long pulses there, followed by short pulses. And C, the long pulses have moved, and D, the long pulses have moved. So clearly the beginning is some sort of prefix, and the end, the last few bits, encode which button was pressed. I'll stop this video and, and give you some time to, uh, to try this out yourselves.